Imagine this a blood type so rare, so mysterious, that scientists still struggle to explain its origins. A blood group that refuses to fit neatly into the categories that define most of humanity. This is the enigma of RH negative blood, a genetic marker carried by only a fraction of the human population. But here's where things get even stranger. Some researchers believe this rare blood type may not come entirely from us, modern humans, but instead from one of our closest extinct relatives, the Neanderthals. How could a vanished species still leave its fingerprints on our veins? And why does this blood type remain so unevenly scattered across the world? Could it really be that every person alive today with RH negative blood carries an echo of the Neanderthals inside them? Stick with me, because in this video, we're going to unravel the science, the legends, and the mind-bending implications of what RH negative blood really means, and why it may connect you directly to one of the greatest mysteries of human evolution, the basics of RH blood. Before we dive into Neanderthals, let's break down what RH negative actually means. Humans have four main blood types A, B, A, B, and O. Each of these can be either positive or negative. That positive or negative comes from something called the raw factor, a protein found on the surface of red blood cells. If you have it, you're raw positive. If you don't, you're raw negative. Globally, about 85% of people are raw positive. That means only around 15% are negative. But here's the kicker. RH negative blood isn't spread evenly across the globe. It's concentrated in certain places and almost absent in others. For example, among the Basques of northern Spain and southern France, up to 35% of people are RH negative. In much of Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, the percentage drops to single digits sometimes as low as 1% or less. In Northern Europe, including the British Isles and parts of Scandinavia, rates hover between 15-20%, much higher than the global average. So what explains this strange distribution? Why would one population carry so much of it, while others almost none at all? This is where the story gets fascinating, because the answer may go back not hundreds, but tens of thousands of years. Meet the Neanderthals. To understand the puzzle, we need to revisit the world of the Neanderthals. These weren't mindless cavemen. Neanderthals were a human species who lived in Europe and Western Asia for over 300,000 years. They were skilled hunters, toolmakers, and even artists. Evidence shows they buried their dead, used pigments, and perhaps even created symbolic jewelry. Physically, Neanderthals were from us. They were shorter but stockier, built for survival in harsh ice age climates. They had large brow ridges, bigger skulls, and in many cases, brains just as large, if not larger, than modern humans. For a long time, the story we told was simple Homo sapiens came out of Africa, replaced the Neanderthals, and that was the end. But modern DNA analysis has shattered that idea. When humans left Africa and spread into Europe and Asia, they didn't just replace the Neanderthals, they interbred with them. Today, almost every non-African person alive carries 1-2% Neanderthal DNA. That means Neanderthals aren't gone. In a very real sense, they live on, in us. And one of the most intriguing ways they may still live on is through our negative blood, a genetic fingerprint in blood. So what makes Raj negative so suspiciously Neanderthal-like? Genetic studies suggest that Neanderthals may have carried Ra negative variants. When they interbred with Homo sapiens, that rare trait was passed into our lineage. In isolated pockets of Europe, where Neanderthals lived longest, it may have persisted strongly. Think of it like this. Neanderthals adapted to Ice Age Europe. They may have developed unique traits that gave them advantages in survival, like certain blood variations. When humans migrated in, they inherited those traits through interbreeding. Populations that mixed heavily diluted it out. Populations that stayed isolated preserved it. This is why some anthropologists call RH negative a genetic fingerprint of our contact with Neanderthals, and it explains why the highest concentrations today are in Europe, exactly where Neanderthals made their home for hundreds of thousands of years. The Basque mystery. Nowhere is this more visible than in the Basque people of Spain and France. The Basques are one of the most unusual populations in Europe. Their language, Ascara, has no known relatives. Their culture survived Celts, Romans, and countless other invaders. And genetically, they stand apart from neighboring groups, most striking of all. They have the highest rate of Arj negative blood in the world, up to 35%. Could this be evidence that the Basques are direct descendants of Europe's earliest inhabitants? Hunter, gatherers and Neanderthals, who carried the Rara negative gene. Some researchers believe so, 
And if that's true, then RH negative blood isn't just rare, it's a living link to the deepest roots of Europe, the legends and theories. Because of its rarity, Ra negative blood has fueled countless myths and theories. Some fringe ideas suggest RH negative people are more resistant to certain diseases, they're more sensitive to altitude or climate changes, they're more intuitive or neurologically different. And, of course, there are the more extreme theories that RH negative people are descendants of gods, aliens, or something other than human. While science doesn't support most of these claims, they show how deeply Arj negative blood fascinates people. Its mystery sparks the imagination, because it feels like it shouldn't be here at all. But even without the legends, the scientific mystery is just as compelling. The costs and benefits of being ROG negative. There's another layer to this puzzle. Being ROG negative isn't just unusual. It comes with biological consequences. During pregnancy, if an RH negative mother carries an ROC positive baby, the immune system may attack the fetus as if it were foreign before modern medicine. This was dangerous and sometimes deadly. So here's the paradox. If RH negative creates complications in reproduction, why didn't natural selection eliminate it? The answer may be that RH negative carried advantages too, perhaps against certain diseases or environmental stresses. In Ice Age Europe, where Neanderthals thrived, these advantages may have outweighed the risks. This would explain why the gene persisted in some populations, but vanished in others. It wasn't just random chance, it was survival. Modern science and Neanderthal echoes. Today, geneticists are still mapping the spread of RH negative blood in the Netherlands, Britain, and Scandinavia. About 16-18% of people carry it, much higher than global averages. Some studies show it clusters more strongly in regions historically inhabited by tribes with deep European roots, like the Frisians or the Basques. That suggests Ra negative isn't just a modern quirk, it's a deep, rooted trait, passed down from ancient populations who may have intermingled with Neanderthals. It also means that when you get your blood type checked, you're not just learning a medical fact, you may be peeking into the story of your ancestry, a story written tens of thousands of years ago, to marker of identity. So what does this mean for identity? Blood doesn't just carry oxygen, it carries history. For people with Arsh negative blood, that history may include a direct connection to the Neanderthals, a reminder that we are not the only humans to have walked this earth. It also forces us to rethink what it means to be human. We like to imagine a straight line ape, like ancestors evolving step by step into modern humans. But the truth is far stranger. For most of history, there were many kinds of humans, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and us, sometimes competing, sometimes mixing. Rarech negative blood may be a living trace of that messy, fascinating reality. The mystery lives on, and yet the mystery is far from solved. Scientists still debate the origins of RH negative. Was it a random mutation in early humans, a survival trait passed on by Neanderthals, or something even more complex, involving multiple human species? We don't know for sure. What we do know is that its presence today isn't random. It's a signal from deep time, a story carried in the bloodstream of millions of people. So the next time you hear about blood types, Remember sometimes, they're not just medical categories, they're windows into the oldest stories of our species. And if you happen to be R negative, you might just be carrying a piece of the Neanderthal world, inside you a living mystery from a species long gone, but never truly forgotten. Conclusion blood that ties us to the past. In the end, the story of RH negative blood is more than science. It's about survival, identity, and the hidden links between us and those who came before. It tells us that Neanderthals aren't as extinct as we think. They live on, not just in DNA percentages on a genetic test, but in the very blood that flows through millions of people alive today. The question remains what other secrets lie buried in our veins, and how many more hidden connections to our ancient relatives are waiting to be discovered. One thing's for sure, the mystery of RH negative blood has only just begun to be unraveled.